Hi, I'm Paul Brody. We're in my shop. Welcome back. Mitch is behind the cameras. And thank you, Mitch. Today we're gonna have an update on the Aramaki and then we're gonna figure out how to mount a steering damper. I've had this steering damper since the late 80s. Uh, it's an Odyssey and it was made for a, a mountain bike. Odyssey back then figured they were gonna do, I think there was three things that they made. One was a, a steering damper and possibly a stem and there was something else, I can't remember. And they were promoting these three items pretty heavily. So it was at a race and it was a race prize. I don't think I won the prize, but I think a friend did or someone did and we did a swap. Somehow I ended up with this because I he didn't want to use it and I thought, I like that. So I've had it kicking around. I, I mounted it on an Aramaki race bike years ago, but then I found out that I didn't need it, so I took it off and it sat in the box for years. It was pretty dusty. So we're going to see if we can get this set up on the Aramaki. For road racing, you don't need it, but if that bike ever goes down to the salt flats, they've got rules down there. The salt flat, your angle of lock is, is 15 degrees each way. So that's one of the first things we're going to do is to, is to make a drawing and figure out how to make a steering stop for the forks. That's not going to be hard, but we have to make a drawing to know how long the piece of, of Delrin is. And then we're going to figure out how to mount this. And it's, I've mounted steering dampers before. It's not just a case of putting, mounting it to the fork and the frame or whatever. There's, there's some, there's some things involved. So these are all the notes I made. Mitch is going to flash that on the screen. So these numbers are going to be used to work on the drawing because it's a little bit more complex than just bolting it on. You have to think about it. That's the project for today. Let's go over to the bike and I'll show you what's new. I did some fiberglassing yesterday. These mounting points, there's four of them. They got fiberglass into place, so they're not going to come off. And when I was looking at the tank, if you, can you eyeball down this line here? This is not even straight. So I got a surface table and I got a big emery block with some 40 grit paper. We're going to, we're going to make the bottom of the tank straighter anyway. So that, that's going to happen. And the mounting plate here for the, for the breather bottle, it got finished on the back. You can see I've, I've added some lightning holes here. Up here, that's for the electrics, and I don't have a battery or electrics yet, so this is just left large and plain because I don't know exactly what I'm going to be mounting here. I made up a little piece of stainless steel here. It holds the tube from flopping around because you know there's such a lot of suction I wouldn't want the hose to get sucked into the motor so that's going to be really handy. And then around this side here I made a, we don't have the shocks yet. I phoned work shocks yesterday. We're still on the list but I made this thing here so that it just holds up the back end. So now I have a rolling chassis so I got the rear wheel held in the, in the wheel clamp and that allows me to, I can turn the fork now. This is where the steering stops are going to go. It's going to go right under here. See how that works? When you figure out the length, it dictates how much you can turn the fork. So if these were shorter, I could turn the fork more or if they were longer, I wouldn't be able to turn the fork as much. So this is just Delrin. This is a perfect application for Delrin because it's fairly light. It machines beautifully. It's black. It's going to be good. I'm going to draw the head tube, a part of the frame, and the triple clamps. And then we're going to work with some angles there. So let's do that. I'm not a draftsman. I took I took drafting in grade eight. If that counts. So that's the head tube there. The offset of the triple clamp is 60 millimeters. So we'll do that. 
This is going forward. 60 millimeters. And all you draftsmen out there, you'll probably have some comments, I'm sure. And the fork tubes from center to center are 7.08 inches. So if I take my, my calipers now, and half of that is going to be three and a half inches plus 40 thou. So 3.54. That should be okay. So those are the centers of the fork tube. And that should be 7.08 inches. So this is a double check. Yeah, it's just, just over 7. So the fork tubes are, are 35 millimeters. So there's one fork tube. So that's the triple clamp right there. So part of the rules for the salt flats, whether this bike goes or not, you can only move your fork 15 degrees each way. So if I make a mark up here and I draw in, in my fork tube again at 15 degrees and then I know how, lot, how wide my mount is, that's, that's my steering stop. 15 degrees is right there. And if I measure from here, it's four and a quarter. So four and a quarter here. Guess I could use a compass as well, that would work. There's four and a quarter right there. So I'm eyeballing again for 90. My acromity is working okay today. So at full lock, that's how far the fork will move in this direction. And then this one over here, it'll be the same. So this is going to be half the width of the mount in front of the steering head. That's the steering stop from there to there. So if we measure that, looks like 1.810. So let's go to the lathe and we'll make up a couple steering stops. 1.810. I could hold this in more, like, like that, but then I can't measure it. So I need to have this out about there because, because then my caliper fits in there. Does that make sense? Okay, so I can drill some holes now because there's going to be a six millimeter Allen screw that holds the two together. There's a spacer that goes in between. I made these ones, I don't even know when. And this is not Delrin, this is aluminum. It's been anodized black. You can see the spacer that goes in between those two 3 16 plates. So that's what holds it on here. So when, when I was using these ones, every time the forks hit the aluminum, it goes clunk. You, you can actually hear metal on metal. That's why it's nice to use the Delrin because the plastic, even though it's fairly firm, you don't get that same clunk. You can, you can hear it hit, but it's not metal on metal. It's metal on plastic or Delrin. A Delrin is just a brand name. It's some kind of a plastic. But over here, everybody knows it as Delrin. I didn't know it was anything else. So 
Depends where you live in the world, apparently. So that's the screw that goes in the middle. It's been turned down a little bit so it fits in there. So we're just going to make these guys the same. drill here that I sharpened up this is like a counter borer for a that's what it's doing it's boring for the head of an allen screw so we're going to make this at the same depth as this one <laughs> Okay, that's one side done. It's got the Allen screw in there. So now we have to make a hole in the other side and thread it six millimeters. It's Deller and I did not use any tapping fluid. <laughs> but it kind of sticks in there. We're going to weigh these ones. Actually, the aluminum one is a touch shorter. Can you see that? It's just a little bit shorter, maybe a millimeter. So the aluminum one weighs 69.8 grams, and the Delrin weighs 37. So that's a lot of weight saving for a spacer. Big fan of Delrin. There's our, our steering spacer. So what I'm doing now is I'm, I'm going to lock this in between the fork tube and the, and the number plate mount. And then this determines the position of where the, because right now I don't know where this goes. But when this comes up like that, I want this to be in the middle here. See, see if I... I if, if I put my fingers on either side, I, I can tell more or less when it's in the middle. It doesn't have to be perfect, but it can go down just a little bit there. So I'll outline this, and then we'll take this piece off, and we'll drill a hole, and we'll mount this. That's one step. Easy way to find the center. If I go off of these four little things here. This will be close enough. That's a punch. Let's see how it all fits together. And there's our steering stops. Put the number plate back on. So according to my calculations, that is 15 degrees each way. It's not a whole lot at all, is it? On a road racer, that would be fine too. And the throttle cable, you see how the throttle cable comes down here a little bit, but then when you turn it, it's, see it slide over the Delrin? I guess the, this, this could get held up a little bit like that. So. Now, now we're back on the drawing. I'm just sketching in the down tube here, or the spine, whatever you want to call that big tube. So there's a uh, 
a cross member that goes across here. That is the tank mount and I'm going to draw that in because that's where the where the steering damper is going to mount to because I don't want to put a separate mount onto the frame. So it, it's nice when you can use a mount for more than one purpose. That's really good. So it can go something like like this. See this piece here? It's a clamp. And and this clamp you can move up and down. So so there is a little bit of adjustability. We have to have to take into account the stroke cuz it goes all up that much. We got th three and a half inches of stroke, but we don't want to use the, the whole three, eight, three and a half inches. You want to go maybe like about so on each end. Just, just have a little bit extra in there. This here, if you don't know, it makes it easier or harder. This is the easiest. And then if I crank it, can you see how it makes it a lot harder to move? I would like to have this on the left because then when you've got the throttle on, you can adjust this, but how often you need to adjust this, I have no idea. Well, I do have an idea, not very often at all. Once it's set, you probably don't have to change it much at all. It would be nice if it was on the left side, but there's a bunch of cables. There's the brake cable and the throttle cable interfering, so it might go on the right side, and then this will get hidden under the gas tank. That's my plan. And we're going to have a mount which goes around the fork tube, something like this. But we have to figure out the spacing. And then the, this will mount onto the tube, which is also the tank mount. So what we need to do is to make an arc of, of 15 plus 15, which is, is 30 degrees because that's how much movement we'll get. And so we'll have a line coming out like that. And then we have to figure out where it's three and a half inches. Or let's say, let's say three inches. Then we've got a quarter inch on each end. That's only two and a half inches or a little bit more right, right out there. So, Well, I guess it could go like that. It's really hanging out in the breeze there. I, in my mind, I thought it would all be right in here so it was all in line with the frame, but obviously that's not going to happen. Otherwise, you won't get enough movement. I don't know if I want a one piece because then if I do a one piece like this, then I have to take off the, the handlebar and the triple clamp to mount this. It would be nice to have a two-piece. I'm not usually a fan of two-piece, but then I don't have to take anything off. And then if I don't want to use the steering damper, it comes off really easy. I was just talking to Mitch and we were discussing this and I said, if, it, if this bike ends up at the salt flats, as long as you have a steering damper, then you're in accordance with the rules. I don't think there's anything in the rules that say how effective the steering damper has to be. So I think I'm going to make a mount, which is a two-piece mount, and it clamps on, and then I can swing this around, and then I can have it here, because I would like to have it close to the frame. That would be nice. And if it's not really effective, well, it's just a little bike. It doesn't really need a steering damper because it's not going to go 180, 200 miles an hour. So we're just going to make a clamp that can be moved around like that. And then maybe we'll make a clamp here that just clamps onto the tube. And then it can come off too if it needs to come off. So I think that's what we'll do. We're going to make something that's a little bit more elegant than this. I'm not, I was never happy with this, but it does clamp. So we're going to find some metal, make a two-piece clamp, and then uh, we'll mount it onto here. Then we have a steering damper. Sounds good, right? In accordance with the rules. So there, those, those are four millimeter Allen screws. That's how small they are, but I think they'll be fine. 
This is, is, is designing a pot as you go. Always good to draw things first, and then if, it's, if you don't like it, you just erase it, and then you, you get a sense of what it looks like. Because in starting this, I, I'm not sure what it's gonna look like. I know there's Allen screw on both sides, but the actual shape, It'd be nice if that was a nice arc there. It's like... So if that goes like that, that's about as far as in as you can go. So that's that's the new center line of the bolt. So there's not a lot of room on the side for the bolt, but there's just enough metal there that That'll work. Okay. That's the final shape. Okay. That is that right there. Let's go make a hole. Okay, so the last operation is, is to is to make a hole the right size for the head of the Allen screw because that's going to go down to that level right there. It's 279. This is 278. So that's the right drill, and it looks like I've ground it so it's fairly flat, not like that. That's it. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to draw a line on the split then I'm going to put a punch dot on either side so that when I when it goes together it goes back exactly the same way because if you don't do the punch dot you don't know which way it goes and if the holes aren't quite lined up for some reason then it doesn't fit quite as well so let's go do a punch dot see on on these saddles can you can you see there's a punch dot there's one and over here is, is, is two dots. So they always go back on the same way. It's just a little trick. Nothing high tech, but kind of simple, but effective. Here's my punch dots, so. Can you see the red marks, the, the red, red lines? So that is now horizontal. Not hot. There we go. Yeah, look how close the holes are to the bore. They're really, really close, but that's good. I got a spiral point tap. I like these, they're very good. Let me show you the difference. This is called a machine tap, 
and this is a spiral point tap. Can you see how there's an angle cut here? See these ones? It's just straight. They don't have an angle. What this does, because of the angle, it forces the chip down. On a machine tap, all the chips get caught in the flute here. So that's why you have to back it out a bit and then go again and then you have to take it out, blow out the chips. If you have a hole that goes right through, it forces, it forces the chips out the bottom. That's why on something like a CNC, it just goes down. It just goes down. You don't have to stop. Nice tap. Spiral point. There's also a spiral flute, but that's different. Okay, so that looks like it's going to go. This is anchor lube. You, you can't tell from the bottle because it's so old. But it just gets filled up. I buy anchor lube in, in a gallon container and then I just put it into that. Can you see the ch you can you can see the chips there, eh? That's how you tell I'm Canadian. I said, hey. There we go, it's going, I can feel it go through and the chip just fell on the floor. Very nice. Oh! I could have had gloves on. Oh, look at that. Okay, time for a bandage. If I'd had gloves on, that wouldn't have happened. My band-aid on. Here we go. I'm gonna hold it tighter. Okay. And that looks good. Well, it seems like that fits pretty nicely. It'll look good when it's all smoothed out and polished up. When this mount is kind of in line, not angled in or out, you can now see how much movement, because uh, I'm holding the steering damper, see how much movement there is? That's, that, I think that's acceptable. And I like how it's kind of hidden, because when the, when the tank comes over here, this is how far the tank comes down. The tank's going to come down to a brighter belt there. It's going to hide this because really I'd like to have a silver one. Everything else on the bike is silver, but this is black, but that's not going to happen. So what we need to do is to make a mount. So somehow it's got to go onto this little heim joint here. So uh, the tube here is three quarters of an inch, so we're going to have a piece of aluminum that wraps around. It's got a split in it, and then it also comes down so that the heim joint can, the rod end can screw into that. Okay, so let's use, let's use this. It's already got a hole in it. Inmill makes a nice hole. Pretty smooth. And what size did I say? Okay. I gotta figure out the thread on the that heim joint. It's probably gonna be quarter inch. It's quarter inch national fine. Taking out the burr. 
can use that little file. That'll work. Maybe that's a Whitworth thread. What do you think? I don't think so. It's sure not styling very well. Why is that so tight? Let me just measure that. What the heck kind of thread is... Hold on, we have a problem here. Okay, so it needs a little a little tweaking because the hind joint is only just the rod end is barely threaded in because I thought it was a quarter inch, but it's seven millimeters, so you can see. But that's weird because it's it's a seven millimeter thread, and this is it's almost an eleven millimeter nut, but it's not. It's a seven sixteenths. So totally weird. Back from the eighties, you can see the steering damper working. So I would say that the job done. It's not perfect, but I can fiddle around with it and get it going. Thank you very much for watching our video. We appreciate you watching and coming and, and checking it out. Uh, Mitch and I like coffee. If you buy us coffee, we'll give you a thumbs up. That'd be great. Until next time, take care, stay safe. Bye.